Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. We have a very special guest today, and we're just gonna let you introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah. it's, you, you came in here, and it's been just kind of a whirlwind, and we know I, you've got. I a just lot have of one word: authority. That's what she has. <laughs> yes, she has experience. So yeah. listen. Well, and it the elephant in the room is my name. We don't ever know how to say it. We we don't even know what. And to we don't know you. why my parents named me that. Let's just be honest about like why junior high is already Ooh. hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> what if you spell it and then you never say it, and then our fans just have to like guess how to yeah. pronounce it? But. The great thing is if you need a YouTube channel, a Twitter account, That's so an Instagram true. account, it is my URL no. is really just my name right. because no one and people are like well how do I find you I'm like you just start typing and Google's like oh it's that no place. it's like <laughs> it's my, my last person. name Winch yeah. is unique so like I'm the only one so I play yeah. a little game like my first name with another odd last name and uh, it just okay. throws my first name crazy in another realm well, then you would so just be... if I had your last Gaina Lynn Winch yeah Gaina right. Lynn Gaina Lynn G-A-N-E-L that just sounds like an insult it does yeah and L-Y-N, that's my first name. And it's hyphenated, which everyone's like, is that optional? And I'm like, no, actually hyphen means keep it together. Do not drop it. It's on my birth certificate. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. And I was one of those members of the church that grew up without a middle name. I think that's somewhat a culture thing. There and was then, a few years. Yeah, where, like, yeah, yeah. So that when I got married, my maiden name became my middle name. So my maiden name is Killo, which this is little known fact. I haven't shared on other interviews. So if you actually saw my full name, it's Gainalyn Killo Condi which just is mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. Wow. And it sounds like a foot disease. And actually, no, so... little little um, Hebrew connection here. Oh, okay. Gainal is the female version of John in Hebrew. So there are a lot of Hebrew-speaking Jews that would totally get my name. That's really cool. So you could just call me John. Okay, John. John. So today we have John on the show. <laughs> Everyone's and... like, hey, Justin, <laughs> what's wrong with the screen? Well, and so you are... An author, you are a motivational speaker, you are a content creator, but I think what I got from most is that you like want to talk about the hard things in the church, and you create media content to help th with that, to help us, to help members yeah. of the church. Um, Which is very synergistic with I think what you're doing. I would here. hope. So. I would hope yeah. so. I've hoped you've yes. been comfortable yes. a few times with yes. with us or Quaku mostly. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think no. what I love is that you. As a whole, this platform is really trying to go in that space as well. And w the B-roll of the pre-interview of the interview, yeah. we were kind of thinking, okay, it, we probably should have recorded that. But I will just <laughs> say, I, I have a passionate why around that, around having the uncomfortable conversation, so to speak. And that, first and foremost, I'm really clear that enemies like to be anonymous. And so I call out Satan all the time. He gets a small S when I post his name. Let me just say that. He never gets a capital. And I'm wearing the devil is a liar t-shirt because he really is a liar. And he's my enemy, but I also know who my boss is. And I know we're going to win. And that's kind of how I frame it. And he doesn't take a day off. He's not like, oh, it's the fifth Sunday. I don't think I'll talk about sex today. And he's talking about all the uncomfortable right. stuff. Snapchat has like elevated his voice. You know, mm. let's just be honest about it. And so we're losing too many people. A lot of the work I do is always going to include suicide prevention, depression, anxiety. My 40-year-old sister took her life five years ago. So it doesn't matter what speaking event, it honestly, media, whatever I'm doing, I school squeeze that in there. But that's not the only topic that five or six years ago, no one was talking about it. Right. I'm really kind of excited in some ways. I'm like not revolutionary in that topic anymore because other people are now starting to have that conversation. Right. But there's a long list of stuff. Right. Like I always just throw out their addiction and sex and it wakes up a Sunday school class. They're like, what? Wait, what are we talking we about? We don't talk about that. Right. We don't talk especially, about that here. Yeah. Like, especially the family awards where you have yeah. members who are like the great, a little getting a little gray and been there a little while. Like those are things that like have been avoided. Yeah. yeah. You know? But and they it, tend to be the ones crying because they're in the corner thinking, I followed the recipe, I call it, of raising my kids. Mm -hmm. We had family home evening. We did all these things and all my kids are like, I'm done with religion. I'm done with your religion. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what did I do wrong? They want the permission as well. And we've not always done a great job 
traditionally speaking in the church, I think of talking about the how or even the why. We're doing better on the why. We used to talk about the what all the time, like faith, love your family, repentance, forgiveness, uh, but not how does that look when we're having real families. I think the internet has changed that a lot because I think in the past we've thought like, okay, we're not going to talk about this stuff, which is the first mistake, Right. but nobody else is going to either. But now it's, we don't talk about it. Well, your kids are just going to learn it from a different right. source, oh well, which that's, is the that's worst the other, thing. Yeah, like there was no resources back then. So if right. you didn't talk about it, your, it kids was a your kids wouldn't even know it existed. Yeah. Right. Well, and I think also I love what you're saying that there's a vacuum that we create in our culture, I think, sometimes. And I've often been booked to go speak somewhere and maybe there's someone in the stake or in the school or in the business that hire me. And they're like, is she going to bring up this? And, you know, and I don't have an agenda other than to save lives. And if you look at, we talked about the five wise, five foolish before we started taping. If you look at that parable, that's 50%. There's another scripture reference of two in the field. One drops, one doesn't. That's 50%. Like, are we ready really to lose 50% of our family, of our church communities to whether it's we lose them because they walk away from faith or we lose them because our relationship is like severed or we lose them in a real sense to to suicide because we're not having these conversations. And I jokingly, unjokingly say Satan talks about sex all the time and he literally doesn't have a body. I mean, let's be clear about this. He talks about families, faith, and sex or your body, right? Like that can also encompass addiction, learning disabilities, um, you know, right. eating disorders, whatever. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't have any of that going on. Yeah. He's not working on a family relationship from what I understand. And he's not fostering his faith. And he's talking about bodies constantly. Like everywhere you yeah. get a, a platform of good, you get some of his stuff. And like you said, if we're not going to talk about it, and we're not sitting at a table every day to our kids saying, we talk of Christ, we preach of Christ, so our children know what source to turn to. If we're not framing shame and guilt and addiction, depression, anxiety, whatever it is, all those uncomfortable topics, then what source are they turning to? You know, like social media, social media, right? which is never going to frame Jesus into the picture. Well, and like, and just, just like, I love Instagram. I love searching. I, I like hit the search button and I put like, I love, I love video games. I love Pokemon. And I like, and I search, I, that's all I do is I search for memes about Pokemon. <laughs> Nobody else gets it. I can't share it with anyone because I don't know anyone. Okay, who maybe the you can instruct me later because I you did know. a high school. <laughs> I did a high school assembly yesterday. Two thousand kids, and there was a Q and A at one point. Yeah, they're asking me stuff like my jeans. Where did I get my belt? And then one guy's like, "How do I get out of depression?" Right? Like, oh, good, someone was listening. And then some kids like, "And what's your favorite video game?" And I was like, "I've just lost all credibility. I have nothing to you say." You know, that might be true. No, I'm just kidding. Should I? <laughs> I know no, they're like, well, "You're off the show now." But what I what, what the worst is is. Is you're going through and then and then there's a, there's a post that I'm like oh that looks like a cool meme or whatever and I hit it and it's a super sexual joke mm-hmm. using Pokemon and I'm like like you can't escape it mm-hmm. you know like if you're if if you know I've I've like if you're a kid and you like this stuff because that's what, these video games are for kids you know like let's be honest and if, and if you're, you're gonna be an awesome dad thank you okay okay but like <laughs> but like it's just everywhere it like you literally cannot escape it yeah. unless you hand feed your children perfectly clean media every yeah. day, which in and of itself would be a full-time job and then yeah. some. Like, That's a great way to alienate your kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and exactly. also not equipping them with what I call right. the tool of, of social media. Like, right. I don't carry a hammer around waiting for a nail to pop out of the wall, right. but we never put this tool right. down. If anything, we have to give them the hammer yeah. themselves so yes. that when they run into these things, they know. Yeah, yeah right. but we need, you're right. Like, you have to be talking about these things and, and the how. And the how, and, and the how is like, I've had groups that are like really either church leaders or school groups that are like, we're ready to have these conversations. We heard you're willing. Will you come? And that they're even nervous. They're like, oh, is she going to say something like even recently I I gave a a high school address and they had had other speakers come in and talk about suicide and depression. And what was left in the wake is just kids crying in the bathroom. And yesterday I, I got some feedback like, thanks for like talking about this but laughing as well. And I think that's what the scriptures are. Like, look at the scriptures. None of it is scripted, really. I mean, that's really why we have multiple translations. It's a whole bunch of unscripted saints. 
Oh, what? Oh, oh. <laughs> I like to give, I like to circle it back. So I like shake the camera. Yeah, ah. right. Like, I mean, think of the stories. There are little, like, arms are being cut off. We're yeah. stoning a woman who's struggling with, for strength of youth. I mean, the law of chastity, right? Right. And God, from the beginning, was like, Jesus declared he was the savior of the world to the woman at the well. Well, the woman at the well was not living the law of chastity. She had no Facebook friends. No one was inviting her over to like hang out for Bunko. Do people still play Bunko? I don't, <laughs> no, know. I don't even know what Bunko that is. Anymore. Okay, the, the people in this room kind of know, and it's because they're female. But there used to be these Bunko what... parties. You know? Well, I've heard of it. Okay, I, I from I, my grandma. I, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Be honest, I can be there, Mom. Let's you. just be honest on the age. I'm pushing the 50. But that's my point is the women in the town weren't coming to the well that time of day because they knew her business. Right. And the Savior said to her, I'm the Savior of the world. And she wasn't like, let me get back with my bishop and I got to work on some things and then we can talk. She was like, in my guilt, I believe you versus shame, which was... A, a story that Satan is always feeding us, right? Like you're bad, not what you're choosing is bad. And so I think that's a perfect example of like, if we're not picking up the scriptures or having conversations, come follow me is all about bring it to your house so that your family dynamics that are very unique to your family get to really connect with the scripture in a real way. And I'm not saying parents have to know like, the history behind all of Paul's journeys and right. why all of Revelation symbolism really means what are the seals and the angels and the, right. like when I do come follow me content, I'm always saying like, what is the one nugget here that is going to get your 13 year old son who would rather search Pokemon cards, right? Much rather do memes. Much rather. Much rather and memes, memes yes. right? And Much cards. rather memes. That's true. <laughs> like, have a conversation how Paul was sentenced to die, or John was sentenced to die by being in an oil vat. Like, the scriptures are not, like, I think they're M-rated, at least M-rated. Oh, for sure. Okay. I mean, well, I mean no, no offense to the Book of Mormon videos, but, like, <laughs> they're never going to be successful until they're, like, until there are, you know, until yeah. you're showing, the, like, the reality. Of what's happening. It's going to be too cheesy because yeah. the Book of Mormon was not... Like Clean. it was, it was not like dramatic in the sense that like you can sit down and watch it like a drama. No, it's an action movie. Yes, it's very dark and and really I, dysfunctional families yeah. that are having really hard conversations. You yeah. know, like brothers trying to kill brothers. I think it would be closer like the new Joker movie. I haven't watched it. yet. I haven't either. But like, I feel like it's. I feel like the Book of Mormon would be closer to that. Yeah, where people are mm. leaving and like either inspired or they're gonna go start their own like secret <laughs> yeah. combinations because they learned how to. The... They're all ramming really up them. That's yeah, a good plan. Exactly. When like worship one day week and we're good yeah. the rest of the week. what I think is so ironic is like you mentioned when you're at these schools they're yeah. nervous about what you're going to talk yeah. about but you're there to talk about those uncomfortable things yes. the only reason that they're uncomfortable is because we don't talk about it. Right. That. And I think that's why content like you're producing and what I'm trying to do is that we're showing the how and the the why is clear though. If we're not doing it like we already started out saying there's a vacuum. And when there's a vacuum, we're at risk. I hear too many of my friends and family members that are like, culturally speaking, I don't fit with the church. Culturally yeah, speaking, no one in lot. Sunday school wants to talk about my paradoxical thinking hmm. that we want everything tied up. I love lists that I check off and boxes that are neat and clean. But in reality, we're having a very mortal experience where there's a lot of ambiguity. There's yeah. a lot of paradox. Some of my, I, I think, by design. well, when by I think design. what is so hard about that too is, is I know that there, I personally was a kid who just never really had a problem with believing and following the church's teachings. But then there was the kids who did, who had questions. Yeah. And so when you're in a Sunday school and let's say there's three kids who aren't mature enough to handle certain topics. And then there's the one kid who's just ready to jump on like really hard things. When that kid brings up this really heavy topic about sex and stuff, these three kids are now infected. Right. Because now they weren't ready to hear that. And now is this a topic that they can handle? And the, the fear that a lot of teachers have is that. And parents. And, and parents. And that addressing the issue, the, the problem and the question of the one, are you going to. Expose. Expose and lose the other three because they weren't ready to hear it. S and so I think. And, and, and that's what I think teachers do. And I think that's the biggest problem is that you can't address. There's certain questions that you can't address in a whole classroom. Well, you should be able to but you don't. And so that's what I, I wonder, how do we fix that? Okay, so you know? my thought on that is twofold. One, 
just taking suicide, let's just take that. Yeah. There's a lot of people that still do not know what the research says. The research says that if you talk about it, it does not increase the number of suicides. It actually does the reverse, right? Right. right. But I still have people and groups and businesses and schools and church groups say like, oh, if we talk about it, or we're going to have 11 year olds mm. there. And I'm like, do you know what 11 year olds have already seen on YouTube and on Pinterest? Mm. Right. Like, but they're afraid of planting ideas. Right. And what I would say is we name it to tame it. I mean, that's one of the things that so, just by saying that. So a teacher or a parent. So you would say like, it's okay to just it's talk okay about to it. It's okay to say. And it's what you're doing is instead of planting an idea that's putting a kid at risk, you're actually immunizing them. So if yeah. you are a Sunday school teacher or a parent and something comes up, I mean, first of all, parents, like I just had a conversation with my college age son on the phone the other day. I was so glad we were on the phone because he could not see my face. Like he thought yeah. I was like so present and calm and and inside, I was like, ah, what? Right? So I think one of yeah. the things that parents and teachers need to know is we don't have to have all the answers. And you can put a pause button on it in your head. Like, don't respond. Just by listening and saying, this Sunday school class or this kitchen table is a safe place to get your questions out. And we'll figure out answers together is a good how. Right there. So if you were to wrap up. We're going to wrap up. Uh, well, I, I want We're not to, wrapping up. Well, I I'll be here to, like 20, <laughs> 2020 July. I, we will still be taping. <laughs> but if you were to give one, if you wanted people to leave from watching this episode with one idea, one message, what would it be? My, my biggest thing is that we are all doing the best we can. So let's have generous assumptions. So as a parent, say to your kids, hey. This is new for me, but I want you to know in this family, you can talk to us about same-sex attraction. You can talk to us about addiction, pornography, masturbation. We can talk about all of those things. I want you to know that I don't always have the answers, but I'm willing to have the conversation. Because in this house or in this Sunday school class, we're turning to Christ. And he's our source. He's where our hope is. The other thing I would say is absolutely we're fighting a war. And I'm so tired of losing people I love. And I'm not just saying they don't want to show up at church anymore because I still love them and they're having their faith journey. And what you brought up is I was always a kid that just believed, but there were other kids in class that maybe didn't. I think we're not, we're assuming that if uh, someone's life is right here at age 20, they're always going to be on that path. And what I'm seeing is the scriptures unfold and the scriptures say that the great will fall. The end of the Book of Mormon is two dudes in a cave. <laughs> two dudes in a cave. That is not Rice Eccles Stadium or Lavelle Edwards Stadium or whatever stadium you live by. <laughs> that was, growing up, I used to think that, like, right before Jesus gets here, it's going to be a party. Everyone's going to be like, oh, my gosh, the Mormons were right. We believe you now. And what I'm starting to believe is that we're on a faith journey and it's okay to be in the paradox. And when we t equip our kids specifically with that, but my faith friends are my equals in age usually, right? Or close to it. They're not the people I'm in charge of raising, right? right? They're the people I go to and say, I just read something and it's triggering me. Mm -hmm. I just heard something about Joseph Smith. It's triggering me. I go to those people because they are trusted sources. I tell teenagers all the time, your car breaks down, you don't go to Old Navy to fix it. But we think Google has got the answer. Right. And right now, parents need to know, your kids know way more than you think. And even if yeah. you don't have the answers and it scares you to death and it makes you uncomfortable because you don't even want to talk about sex with the person you're married to that you should be having sex with, right? Like, let's be yeah. honest. That's why it's uncomfortable that there's a way for us to say, Heavenly Father wants all these good things to happen for us. That was his plan from the beginning. We all voted yes on that plan because we had a savior and we knew it was going to be messy. I mean, we knew about suicide. We knew about depression. I believe we were equipped with everything we were going to need to do life and that the pioneers that have already passed are actually having holidays for us now. Mm. They're like, you know, the wagon, that was hard. No shoes, really hard. Crossing the plains, not a picnic. But we need to have a holiday and a parade for all the people in 2020 that have Snapchat and trying to raise kids. Like, let's be honest, we are pioneering through some really big uncharted waters. Yeah. And I think we have to realize this is about life 
and death. My life is not better without Meg. And she is, in my faith, she's on the other side cheering me on. I'm often on the stage and I feel right there. Or I have people come up later and they have those spiritual gifts and they're like, oh, we don't want to freak you out but we think Meg's here. And I'm like, yeah, she's totally here. I don't know all the work she's doing, but I know my voice is always going to be stay in your body. It's imperfect. Our families are imperfect, but just showing up is, is crucial to our survival spiritually and physically at this point. And so I would just say, start, play this episode for family home evening. Mm, that's a great like, idea. I always say to parents <laughs> and and church leaders, play one of my things or or search really good content creators that are having these kind of conversations. Because guess what? It takes all the pressure off. And then you sit back and you go, hey, so what do you think about all that? They all said those words. Do you guys know what they mean? You know, that's the other thing is parents are like, oh, no, my parent, my kids don't understand. Yeah. They really do. They're hearing stuff in the hallways at school. They're hearing right. things from their friends. They're reading stuff online, even if you're putting blocks and checks and balances. And you want, we have to create ward families and home families that are the safe places to sit in the paradox. Because we're losing too many people. And I, and I miss them. I want them. I want them physically here. I want them in my Sunday school class. I yeah. want my LGBT friends to be in Sunday school because those friends that have wrestled with policy changes and right. the paradoxes. They're the strongest of oh us Oh, my gosh. Yeah. They glory in their Jesus in a whole new level. And they have taught me so much about covenants. They've taught me so much about Jesus and grace and and what it feels like to not have all the answers and not be able to put everything in a box. We have too many teenagers like, oh, my church is haters on LGBT. I'm out of here. And I'm like, no, talk to an LGBT that's still showing up in Sunday school. They're going to tell you about the wrestle that they've had. They don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. And they're trusting a lot in God. And they're trying to keep showing up. And that's what we're all trying to do. Instead, we show up, I always say on Sunday, all showered, all cute. Well, sometimes I'm cute. I was showered. like, hopefully showered. Let me just say that. It doesn't that. happen as often as yeah. I like. Yeah, and then we I sit eat. in church and people people aren't standing up. Uh, there, There's change happening on that. I think we're talking about vulnerability and authenticity out in the world more than, than maybe we had in the past. And that's giving church communities the permission to do that. I also have pastors from other churches that invite me. I think that's revolutionary. It's I not do, a latter. It's not just a Latter Day Saint problem. Thank you. And right. bishops and stake presidents, I are not as likely to call a pastor of another church and say, "Would you come oh, to my?" Definitely con not. Yeah. I've never seen that yeah. happen. But congregations of other denominations have invited me to come and have these conversations, and they still call me Mormon. So please don't hate mail me on calling myself a Mormon. <laughs> and they're scared at first that I'm going to say Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith, and right. I don't. Well, and I right. talk about the New Testament and they're like, wait, you know the Bible? I'm like, yeah, I know the Bible, you know? But they're willing to have these conversations. This is crossing every demographic. Right. Like every religion is wrestling with keeping people in the seats. And every religion is like, how do we address suicide, depression, and anxiety? And I love that our church is leading out. I helped a lot on some of the behind the scenes on the suicide prevention site the church put up. And it's it's brilliant, not not because of my little contribution, but because they wanted to start having the conversation. We can get ahead of the curve on some of this stuff. We have faith. We should be talking about, we should be framing all the uncomfortable stuff in the faith lens. Instead, we're letting the world take it, and it's turning into these crazy, there's no hope, no answer. Netflix will release a story about whatever depression, anxiety, and suicide, and there's no actionable hope afterwards. As a faith community, we have a really great answer to that. Jesus. Mm. Reminds me of that scripture mm. and, uh, about having a ready answer, ready response for the hope of Jesus that you the have within you. The hope of Jesus. Yeah. I went and spoke in the prisons a couple weeks ago. It's my favorite gig. I love it. So and cool. one inmate raised his hand and he was like, what's your favorite scripture? And I said, it's part of one. And it's glory in my Jesus. I glory in my Jesus. And we need a little bit more preacher amen praising going on because <laughs> that's where we maintain hope. And we're not going to eliminate the dark, but we can do more to turn up the light. And our family conversations and our church conversations, if we're avoiding all of these things, then we're leaving those gatherings. We worked really hard to get there and we don't go home changed. 
And then we're trying to search for that light in other sources that aren't always great trusted sources. So thank you guys for no, like thank you. turning up the light. Thank you. Oh, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that was great. Thank you. You're welcome. Because like um, every every message makes a difference. Like, Everyone like, and that, for that's, one. Yeah. Every view is a person like seeing it every, every time we talk about these things. So um, if you guys, um, if you're interested in any of these topics that we talked about today, um, please look. Do you, do you have a website? Right? I have a website. I have a YouTube channel. I have a Twitter account. I have an Instagram account. Good. And multiple Facebook pages. I know that's for the old people still, but we're still hanging out <laughs> so on there. So we'll leave maybe a few of your links, all of them below. <laughs> My website and, yeah. has all the links, Good. but I don't even, I, I just honestly Google knows who I am because Good. you just start typing it right, and name, some and of it, it will come up. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to, yeah. this is the content. I mean, that's my why. It's for the one. That's what I say is yeah. Jesus showed up for the one. I try to show up for the one. But there's moments when I get messages from people that say you've saved my life. Please keep posting that I get a little Alma the Younger. I get a little, oh, that I were an angel. Like, okay, I'm not at a million yet. If I'm <laughs> yeah. reaching the one and I got 10 messages this week of people whose lives were saved, like, I'm really, God, can we get my following to the place where it's reaching, you know. That's the hope. It's like charge. literally the hope of everyone. It right? is. Yeah. It is. It's, and it's not because he's my boss. I mean, he's my boss. It, like, there's a lot of great messengers out there right now. And there's a lot of great speakers and authors and all of that and YouTubers and all of that. But if I can offer some unique contribution and, and showing the how of doing this, my why is really, really clear for me. And my boss... Yeah. My boss and I try to keep eyes on each other. Yeah. I feel like this is a good point to, to stop. There, Nothing though. left to yeah. say. Go follow her on all of her channels. Follow us as well. Weird name, Gainalyn. Gainalyn. Yep. 